Gospel Church from Clara to Stamp here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. How is everyone today? I'll, um, I'll give you a few minutes to, to join the room. I can see we've got some viewers already and um, I bet it's all the good old regulars there first, ready and waiting, ready to get in the groove. Um, so I'll just waffle for a little bit until I start to see some chat coming up. Stuart's in the room with you today, so um, hopefully you can hear me and the sound is all nice and clear. Good morning, there we go, all the regulars coming in first. Suzanne, Sally, um, Sharon, wishing Paul and all a good morning, good morning from a very soggy Leicestershire. Yes, it's very soggy here in Eden Bridge as well today. I don't know if you can hear the rain on the roof. Um, but it's definitely raining today. Um, bit of a change from the weekend. The weekend was sort of a bit grey and then brightened up in the afternoon. So, um, so yeah, who knows? I, I think they reckon it's going to be wet in the southeast for the rest of this week. And then I think towards Friday and the weekend, it was meant to sort of stop <laughs> um, and calm down a little bit. So um, what's the weather like with you? where everyone is, who we've got in the room. So we've got Ken, we've got Josie, um, Lorraine, Overcast in Estoponia. Um, good morning, Bobby, Bernie. There we go, sound is good. Thanks, Stuart. Um, there we go, raining, 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 <laughs> wet, raining. There you go. I think that must be the whole of the UK is raining. Um, soggy in Gatwick. Oh, isn't it funny? The weather, the weather gets us talking, doesn't it? It's a good sort of <laughs> conversation over there. What's the weather like with you today? Um, Josie said it's good weather for ducks, wet in Fatcham. There we go. Who needs a weather report uh, on the TV? Just come into Groovy Tuesday. Um, good morning, Paul. Sun. Oh, I'm off to Cornwall. Sunny in Cornwall. I haven't got any sound. Uh, as far as I know, everybody else can hear us, Pat. Maybe check your volume or switch off and switch back on again. So, miserable in Newark. It's your birthday. Good, happy birthday, Mary. I was hoping the sun would shine. Well, let's turn the sunshine on for Mary, shall we? So, good morning, Angie, Tina. There we go. Everyone's sorted. Well done, Pat. Glad you can hear us. <laughs> so, or maybe you don't want, maybe it's better with the volume off. Who knows? So, um, yeah, 10 o'clock already. Another groovy Tuesday. Hope you've all been behaving. Um, What's been up to this week, last week, um, since we last met? Ah, beautiful one day special from um, Josie Davidson. Those beautiful diagonal grids. Um, Barb's floral alphabet. Absolutely beautiful. Really were. Um, I mean, the design team and Josie sort of did me proud. I mean, showcasing the product. Um, And I, I thought there was a nice sort of flow to the shows, flow to the shows. Um, really enjoyed it. So um, so thank you for everyone that partook, um, especially to the design team ladies and obviously to Glynis, Jane and Josie for all the fantastic work that they do behind the scenes so that I can present it to you. Um, so... Yes. So where are we heading today? Well, last week, we finally, by the skin of our teeth, we just, we finished off our Christmas tree, didn't we? Maybe you're tuning in for the first time. Um, I'm thinking, what Christmas tree? Too early for Christmas. Never too early for Christmas. Um, so this is what we were working towards for the past six weeks. Can't believe it takes six weeks, but then that's because I waffle um to waffle to waffle too much <laughs> um okay i've just seen a question from lynn is the craft along on friday 
live to all or do you have to subscribe please okay lynn so if you go to our website i'm sure stuart will pop a link up um on our website there in the um one of the sections stuart will find it and um, there's a link of all the different plates um of the christmas treasures it is live on Facebook and um, Clarity Stamp YouTube page at 7 p.m. And obviously, if you can't join us at 7 o'clock, then you can go back and watch it again and again and again. You don't need to subscribe. You just need to tune in at 7 o'clock. Um, how are you watching us today, Lynn? Are you watching us via Facebook? I think Facebook, because it's got a little F under your image. Um, there we go. Stuart's popped the, the link up for you. Um, so on, um, later in the week, probably on Thursday or Friday, I'll put a, a link out onto the Facebook groups, um, where you can sort of say that you're attending the thing. And then hopefully you should then get a reminder just before it's due to start. Um, so, so there we go. So hopefully that answered that question for you. So, right back to the Christmas tree. So we finally finished um our christmas tree last year finished last year last week <laughs> um okay yep yeah, so you're on facebook lynn um so however you tuned in today it'll be the same process all right but i'm sure if you if you've got any questions you can ask on clarity worldwide or groovy worldwide if you're not sure um how to find us um but it's normally fairly straightforward so Okay, so we finished our Christmas tree last week, and so I thought this week now we'll move on to the lovely stocking. Okay, now we've got these on offer as a pair, and you can also we also have available from Mr. Dave, our platinum press man, woo, our stocking and Christmas tree shaped cards. So we've also got those on the website as well okay and we use the christmas tree one to put our christmas tree on so it makes a lovely freestanding decorative card or decoration entirely up to you so let's have a look <coughs> excuse me so that's what we did we finished off last week i've just got a few samples here i just wanted to show i just had them to hand and this one's lovely this is from glynis and what glynis has done she traced the outline of the tree and rather than pico cut on the outside like we have on this one she's pico cut on the inside to create the aperture and then popped one of our beautiful pergamano parchment poppets in the background very clear i love this one i think it's just and obviously all that grid work is optional <clears throat> then we have this lovely piece by francis where she's done it in more in a traditional style. I mean, look at that. Absolutely. And that's one of Linda's children. Um, let me bring that up so you can really take that in. I mean, isn't that special? It really is. Love it. So there's um, a few ideas with the Christmas tree. So let's pop those to one side. And I've got some samples to show of the stocking and when you we say stocking don't think obviously just for christmas because this would be great for um new babies um like babies booties and stuff like that um just bear with for a moment sorry Sorry about this. I've just noticed that there's a lot of spam going on on now. I'm just trying to get this sorted. Um, apologies for that. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's great for a newborn baby, baby's first Christmas, baby's first birthday, newborn baby. It's beautiful. It really is. And this piece was, I'm sure it's created. Let me have a look. By Glynis. So, isn't that gorgeous? Um, so we've got that one there from Glynis. Then I love this one as well, created by Linda herself. Beautiful, just on light blue parchment and then color applied to the toes and the heels. Um, 
and personalised Baby's First Christmas 2020, Benjamin Ellis. Isn't that beautiful? Then moving on to the next one, which is the one that we're going to be working towards. This is um, this stocking belongs to Joshua. Um, and this uses a combination of light and dark teal parchment, some of our two-tone parchment. And I'm, this is where we're, we're going to go. And I'm going to show you a couple of different bits and pieces on this. Let me bring it up a little bit closer so you can see. Okay. So there we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But if you don't want to do it as a, a 3D card, then you can just do it as a normal card. I love this. This is by Josie. See, I, I was, see for me, with Josie, there's no beautiful grid work on that. Um, yeah, really, I love that. One layer, the colouring with the toys coming out the top. Um, really, really nice. And then this, I love this one as well. Just using the elements. This is from Carol Pankstello. Um, using um, the frame from the extended square. Um, and then the toy is bursting out. Isn't that wonderful? I thought so. I, I like that. So that just gives you a few ideas. But as I say, this is the one that we're gonna head towards over the next couple of weeks. So what are we going to need for today? Okay, so we're going to need our stocking plate. We're going to need our plate mate to fit. So this is the calligraphy plate mate, which we also have available. It comes with a beautiful decorative plate in the middle. Okay. Dawn says it was pouring here in Wimbledon. Hope it clears up so you can hang out your washing. <laughs> so that, perfect for that. Now, I've gone for our lovely A5 teal parchment uh, um, duo packs. And we've got lots of different um, two-tone parchments. So this is the light teal and the dark teal. Um, but you could use any color. Um, you could go, if you're going for the pink, the light pink and the dark pink. If you're going green, you can go light green, dark green. Um, the decision is entirely up to you. Okay, but I just thought, since Linda's done all this glorious work for us, I may as well just replicate and show what she's done for us. Okay, so we're gonna need that. We're gonna need our number one and number two tool. We're gonna need our groovy guard, a tumble dry sheet, some groovy tabs to hold everything in place. And I think that's all we're gonna need for today. Yeah, definitely, that's it. So um, not much required, and I'm sure everybody's got everything to hand, ready, maybe just the colors of the parchment. Um, but let me show you, whilst you're getting all your bits together, let me just sort of break it down into the stages so you can see where we're sort of heading. So look, all of this, we're going to trace out the stocking, just like so. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fill in with pattern, but we're ignoring the um, top of the stocking and the toe and the heel. We're going to ignore those because on a separate piece, we're going to, ooh, hang on. We're going to do it of a different colour. And we're going to do bits like this, but choices, pico cutting or straight scissors, entirely up to you. And then you've got the bit at the top of all the dangly bits. Now, the dangly bits are option. Option? Optional. <laughs> if you want to, let me bring this up. Let me, if you want to, Pico cut, oh, sorry, a bit blurry, hang on, all those little bits, feel free. I'm not going to, I'm gonna add it onto the base layer, I'm going to cheat, okay. <laughs> so that's where we're heading over the next couple of weeks. Let's just pop that to one side. 
Are we ready to get started? I think so. I've got my cup of coffee. I've got everything that I need. I've got lovely company in the room. Um, what more do you want to do on a day when it seems to be raining everywhere? You want to stay home and craft. And what a perfect opportunity it is for us to do today. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with the, the lightest of the two colours to create the base of our stocking. Okay, now with our coloured parchment, um, it's very special. The ink has only been applied to one side. Okay, so you've got that lovely sheen. And on the reverse, it's more matte. It's a subtle colour tone. So in order to get the beautiful crisp white line, we need to make sure that the um, shiny side is facing us. However, when we come to some of our paler colours, it can be a bit of a, a, you may not be sure what side is what, because they're very close in colour tones, because yes, okay, Tina, apart from Cornwall, it's sunny. So well, you can sit outside and do your parching then, can't you? Because <laughs> your parchment won't get wet. So what we're going to do, this one, we're going to test to see what's the right side and what's the wrong side. Okay. So first off, we need to make sure that the plate's the right way. So all the wording, everything else is all going to be back to front. Okay. Groovy in the top right hand corner. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to wipe both sides of the parchment because I don't know what side's what. Okay. However, when I've just turned it over there, I can see that this is the softer side compared to the shiny side. Okay. So if I take the shiny, what I think is the shiny side up, we're going to test by just going into the corner of the parchment. And let's just trace out this B. Okay. So if I turn that over, I've got crisp white B. So I know I'm on the right side of the parchment. Now, because I'm only going to be using the stocking itself, I'm not going to put anything above. What I'm going to do, just to save on some parchment, I'm just going to bring it in. So I'm going to line it up with the line under the row of toys. Okay. Let me just line that up there. And then I know if I want to pico cut, I've got enough space around the side. Will it go that way? You know what? It would actually. Okay. Right, let's go this way. Just to, if you want to be really frugal with your parchment. I wonder if you'd get two on there. Let's have a look. Ooh. If you was going to cut out with normal scissors, you would get two stockings out of an A5 sheet of parchment. And you could probably just about do it if you're going to pico cut as well. Mm. Okay, just, just a suggestion. But I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to go this way. Okay, because I can use the other elements there if I want to. So I'm on the shiny side up, facing. Okay. And I'm going to use some groovy tabs to hold it in place. And onto the plate mate there. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach it here. So I've got it attached to the plate mate there and attached to the plate mate down here. So it means if I want to, I can lift it off easily to check what I've done. Okay. So we're going to take the number one tool from the starter kit and we're just going to trace the outline of the stocking. So I'm going to push into the groove. I'm not worried about design at this stage. It is literally just the outline, 
Okay. I remember when we was working on the, the Christmas tree, I said you could do this with paper. You can do the stocking with paper as well. Okay. So I've now got the outline of my stocking. Turn it over and you can see I've got that lovely crisp white line. Okay. So now we become the designer. And I'm going to keep it really simple. Just so it is simple, honestly. Um, like Linda has. Okay. So all of these patterns, we're not going to worry about the toe. And we're not going to worry about the heel. And we're not going to worry about the top. So everything else is a combination of little dots. Now remember I showed you this piece that Linda had pico cut around those okay i don't fancy pico cutting those because there'd be more without than there would be with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add in i'm going to do these ones on the outside as well because i can make my decision later on whether i want to let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing Okay, and zoom in. I'll come in nice and slowly. Hey. Okay. Oh, it's Hilda's birthday as well. Happy birthday, Hilda. I've just seen that. What's it like in Scotland, Hilda? Is it sunny or is it raining? I reckon it's probably raining. Okay, so what I'm going to do, using the number one tool, I'm just doing the little um, attachments with the number one tool, just to give me that crisp outline. Okay, so nice and easy, just like so. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I'm in the groove now. Doesn't matter that it's the rain's thundering down on the roof. I'm in the room, getting in the groove, having fun with my friends. Okay. So if I lift that off now, you'll see I've just added in the little dangly bits on the bubbles. Okay. What I'm going to do now, because I want to do some lovely white work in each of those, but I don't want the, the harsh white line, I'm actually going to take my number three tool and trace out the pom-poms or baubles. Okay. So if I do the number three tool, because I am a little heavy-handed, even with the number two tool, I still get a really sort of prominent um, outline. And these ones here, I'm undecided. They may get lost or they may stay on. I haven't decided yet. But in the scheme of things, it's not going to make any difference to um, the overall design. Okay, so if I lift that off now, you can see they're very, very faint. Where am I going that way? Yeah, I'd get used to this camera by now, wouldn't you? Okay. So that now goes in place. And now we have the fun of tracing out the rest of the design. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do the edge of the um, this hill and I'm going to do the edge of the toe, just so I know in advance where to stop, get carried away. Now to do this, we're going to use the number two tool that comes in the starter kit. So it has a little ball on the end. Okay. So actually this is stitching. So rewind. For the stitching, I'm going to use the number one tool. So I get a crisp white line. And the reason I'm doing 
this is that when we go to the dark parchment it will help with the positioning once we cut it out okay so see i love this design from linda because in a way just like the tree it's blank isn't it and you can add whatever design in the middle you choose to so i'm just going to do the stitching over here if you've gone with um oh you know what would look good on this um the gnomes and the elves i think they'd be brilliant on here I think they'd look fab. What do you reckon? Okay, so that's what I've done so far. See, it doesn't take long to, to take shape, does it? So that goes back in place. Now, do I start at the top? Do I start at the bottom? Do I start in the middle? Decisions, decisions. Let's start at the top and work our way down. So now I'm going over to the number two tool. And all we're gonna do, just like we did when we was working with um, JC's grids last week, I need my glasses. Maybe I need to bring it in closer and look on the screen rather than the play. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, that's better. So all we're gonna do now using the number two tool is just push into the little dots. And all of a sudden, the design starts to take shape. Let's have a look. Look. How great is that? We're gonna turn it over again, and we're now just gonna work our way along the top row. So who's doing their stocking with me today? Come on, hands up. Who's grooving along? Anybody? Everyone's just watching. Or are you working on other groovy projects whilst you're tuning in? I know. I, I love this hour every week. It's my sort of chill out zone. Um, having great company. Again, to do something that I really enjoy. I mean, this isn't work, is it? This is, this is just playing. Jane's not, Jane's watching and drinking coffee. Chrissy's crafting along, Helen's crafting along, Carol Baker and Josie Davidson are doing secret stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. So all we're doing is just following the design. Linda's done. See, I, I say this a lot when um, I'm working with Groovy. Um, I don't need to think about what I'm doing, so to speak, because Josie, Jane, Tina, they've done all the work already, sort of thing. They've done all the thinking. Like Linda's done the thinking on the design and how many little trees it needs to have. Um, Josie does all the thinking when it comes to the beautiful um, duet grids, what it's going to look like, what the options are available um tina with her designs linda it's just it goes on and then when the the artwork comes into the office and then jazz and jim get to work and tweak it here and tweak it there and lisa um they just know exactly what's required see this is really nice Okay, should we have a look and see what we've done so far? Ta-da! There we go. 
Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. I wonder where that saying comes from. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There okay, go, some homework for you. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Where does it come from? How did someone come up with that? Isn't it funny how sort of sayings come about um, over a period of time? So, so what have we got the week ahead whilst I do this? Let me gaze across at my little list that I've compiled for you today. So where are we today? Tuesday today. So um, on Thursday morning at 10 a.m., we're in the shack with Barb. Um, I think we're continuing on with the lovely um, darling Dahlia um, that we started last week. So that's 10 o'clock. Then straight after on Crate and Craft, the lovely Tina Cox um, will be showcasing some of her um, designs. Um, so Tina's on at 11 a.m. and again at 3, eight, oh, 3, 3 p.m. for the Pergamano shows. Um, and I know that she'll dazzle us with hints and tips and techniques um, with some of her beautiful designs. Um, so that's Thursday. So 10 o'clock in the shack, straight over to Crate Craft at 11 for Tina, and then back again at 3 o'clock. Then on Friday um, at 7 p.m., we have the craft along with Barb um, using Linda's Christmas Treasures set four. Um, so that'll be fun. I'll be in the room virtually um, whilst Barb takes us through a craft along using those plates. That'll be fun. That's always great fun. Friday evening, seven o'clock, nothing else to do. So let's have a craft along. And just like all of our um, Shack Shacks and Groovy Tuesdays, if you're unable to, to join in live, don't worry. You can go back and watch it whenever you want. Or if you miss bits, you can go back in and catch up afterwards. Okay, so that's on Friday at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, Tina's back on again on Create and Craft. And she's on at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. So if it's still raining on Saturday, then we don't need to go out, do we? Um, then, and I think that's it for this, that week, this week. So what, let me see, it's Sue Carpenter. Earliest record of the Easy Peasy Lemon Squeezy is 1966 in the bookseller. It means extremely easy to do. So, there we go. Look at this, this little heart. I love it. Look at that. I've missed a bit. It's a broken heart. I've missed a dot. Worry not. I can go back in. Add that little dot in. And I've now got a completed heart. Brilliant. Um, groovy guard. See, this is so. Shall I cheat a bit? I wonder whether I can get away with it. <laughs> Go up and down. <laughs> I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do half a heart by going up and down. Okay. And I'm going to do the other half 
by pushing in. Let's see if we can see the difference. From the back, I don't think there is any. But when we turn it over, we shall see. What do you reckon? Okay, so this half, which is the right half, I went up and down with the tour, and then these ones I did individually. Should we have a look? Yeah, there is a difference, believe it or not. Can you see that? Uh, let me grab a black piece of card. Sorry, I'm waving it around. Or is there? Hang on. So that side there was where I went up and down. And that side there is when I went in. Okay, so that means the left side was where I went in individually. Let me take it down. Can you see? So this one, this half here, I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. Let me see if I zoom in a little bit without going out of focus. Hang on a moment. See, I don't know if you can, but I can. So this side here was where I went in individually. Okay. And this side here is where I went up and down. Now to the naked eye from a distance, where I went in individually, it's not as prominent as when I went up and down. Okay. However, saying that, these are more dotty and these seem to be more sort of square. But when you look at the overall image, there's not much in there, is there? Okay, so you have choices. <laughs> you can decide what way you want to do it. Now I have noticed, see how it's slightly lighter in the middle there, and it's also lighter over there as well. So all I need to do, see I'm being really, really fussy now. I just need to go back in and press again. So what I'm gonna do, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> Is it cheating? Josie, come on, tell me. You're the queen of the grids. And I know this isn't grids, but would you say I'm cheating? What do you reckon? Let's go back and do this heart. Am I going to get told off by the expert parchers out there? I don't mind being told off. I get the blame for lots of stuff. It's your fault I started groovy. I don't mind getting the blame for that. So Jane's saying, the only thing with doing it up and down is you have more chance to slip into areas you may not want. That's very true, Jane. So for example, if I didn't want this area here, for example, See, for, for me, that's where the groovy guard comes into play because it can act as a protection for the area in which you don't want to go into. Glynis is saying, I am cheating, but just to wind me up. Thank you, Glynis. You're so kind. Such a lovely lady. <sighs> I'm waiting for Josie. Oh, oh. <laughs> Josie say, all I'll say is that I don't do it that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the interaction. And I'm sure if the ladies were in the room, 
I'd probably get a clip around the ear. <laughs> oh dear. But you know what? I'll, I'll have a virtual clip around the ear. How does that work? Doesn't hurt as much then, does it? <laughs> So for my heart, I am going to go up and down. But for the little bits, I am going to do them individually. Oh dear, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> that is indeed, Ken, I have been told. I don't mind, though. Could you damage your tools? Um, I would say probably not, but I don't do it all the time. And I suppose, like anything, I suppose in a way, metal does wear away with constant use, doesn't it? But if you think about it, all I'm doing is rubbing on parchment, really. And maybe over a period of time, it could affect the end of the ball tool? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I know it won't affect the um, groovy plate. Because they're cast acrylic, so it would take a lot to really affect that. Okay, let's have a look at my row. Oh, no, before I do the reveal, I want to finish off these little crosses. Just like so. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll have a reveal and see what it looks like. Should we have a little looky? I think we should. Okay, ready? See, this, I can see with the naked eye, it, it's not really showing on camera. This one here was the one that I did individually, and that doesn't seem as bright as the other. It's only fractional, and I suppose if I pop it onto um, a white piece of card, Will you notice the difference? Can't see the difference at all, can you? Really? And there are some areas I can go back in, like that little area there, because I'm really close in on the, the camera. But, but, it's all about playing. Okay, now the next row I'm going to do individually, and then the next row I'll probably do individually as well. So, really, it was only those hearts that I did quickly. So, so Pauline's asking, Can you do it with a number three tool, then let it rest, and then dot with a two? So, Pauline, do you mean the, the cheating way with the number three and then go back in with the number two? Is that what you're asking? Or are you saying do them individually with the three and then do individually with number two? So, Jane's saying it might put more stress onto the parchment, do it like that, as it will be stretching more. Yeah, might do that as well. Um, <laughs> right, so, Pauline, the question is yes. Which one? <laughs> right, okay, I'll ask the first question. Cheating with the number three and then individually with the number two, is that what you mean? I'll wait for that one. First one, yeah, okay. Should we try, see what happens? Let's take another piece of parchment. Let's take this bit here. Let's take a groovy tab. Let's try it. If we don't try, we don't know, do we? 
Okay, so pop that on there. So glasses, whoops, glasses back on. So number three tool. See, I think with the number three tool, it's not going to go very far, but I might be wrong. See, I've seen Tina do this with the basic grid, um, where she created a lovely, but it was on one of the um, Crate and Craft shows. Um, she just gently dragged the tool backwards and forwards up on the, a basic grid to create a really nice sort of background. Okay, so this is done now with the number three tool. Okay, let's, let's bring that one in. Okay, so that's done with the, the number three first. And then that's just done straight with the, the number two tool in the speedy way. So now, let's pop that back in place. It should just go back in right. Is that in the right place? I think so. I don't know. It's harder to. Okay, there's one thing I can tell you. Okay, I can feel it. Just like Jane said, now, did I get it on this one? Let me see. No, that's interesting. With the number three tool, I can feel the parchment um, buckling, okay? But I can't feel it with the number two tool, if that makes sense. Um, so now let me go in and do a row with the number two tool. The number three tool definitely stresses the parchment a little more. It really does. That's really strange. So let's turn this over now. So that's where I've gone back in. I've gone a little bit wonky, but that's where I've gone back in with the number two tool on top of number three. Um, so, but it is really buckled. It's really strange, but it isn't. on here with the number two so maybe the bigger the ball tool is i don't know this i can't explain it um so it was a good question to ask and it was definitely worth giving it a go but i don't know the answer really why it would be apart from what jane's saying is that you're sort of stretching the parchment more quickly so therefore i suppose when you think about when you're doing white work if you go on quick and hard with it then it can buckle the parchment and but you, you're on the soft mat and you're more likely to go through it whereas with the the groovy plate as your um safety net and i suppose using the number two to, if you use the number one I would say I'm likely to rip the parchment. The number two seems to do a really good job. The number three, not so good. It um, it really does stress the parchment out. So um, so it's a good question to ask. And if there's any more questions out there, I'm happy to, to give it a go. Or maybe try it at home yourself. Just take a scrap of parchment and see what effect that you can get. Um, it may be that I went on too heavy with the number three first. Um, yeah. Peculiar. Peculiar. Or as Sharon's saying, when you go up and down, you're actually doing several layers of work, so it'd be brighter than one layer of dotting. Yep, that's true. Um, yeah, Rebecca, I, yeah, I agree. Um, but I wouldn't have fought it. Um, until I tried it. So, good question. Okay. How, it can't be that time already. 10.48, my goodness. Now, I wanted to show you something on these plates. I'm going to digress. Let me just 
take this off. Okay, I'm going to take this off. I wanted to show you something. Now, if I remember right, I should have tried this before, before I go gung-ho into it. If I remember rightly, these little elements here, look, you've got these lovely little houses and the lovely little reindeer. And then you've got houses over here. Okay. And then... Yeah, I'm going to try it. Okay. Let's do this little house. Let's see if I'm right. No, you know what? It's the same for this. So, it's just remembering that I'm going to digress slightly now. But this is how Linda designed it. So if I pop that on there, and what it does, it just opens it up to another layer. So what I'm going to do, number one tool, this lovely snowflake, okay? I'm sure this is, could be talking a load of rubbish, we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> but I'm sure this is the case. And you're thinking, oh, just get on with it. So what are you going on about? So now, if I lift this up, and I, oh, new groovy tabs. <laughs> now, that, is it that way? Yes. Okay. Right, so I've traced that out like so, okay, and if I turn it that way, no, I had it the right way, hang on, like that, and then just turn it, that sits on top of the dots, Like so, a little bit of positioning. I'm sure this is. And then I can infill with the dots. So you've then got solid line and you've got an infill. Yeah, I need to go back in on those dots again. But you get the idea. And I'm sure it's the same for these little houses here. And these little... Try it. If you've got the plate, give it a go. Trace the outline first. And then go in and infill. So you can't even see what I'm doing. Trace the outline first and then go in and infill with the dots. Okay. I know I digressed slightly there, but it was just saying that I just remembered. I'm sure that was the case. Could be talking a load of gobbledygook, but there you go. All right, so let's slot this back into place, just like so. There we go. And that one down there. And let's, should we do the, I'm going to skip, let's, I'm going to skip. I'm not literally going to skip. I'm going to skip this border for a minute because I want to do some of these little reindeers to show you what they look like when they come to life. These are magical little deer. And the detail on them is crazy. 
but it, it gives you a cross between, well not a cross it, you've got that sort of nordic feel to it but you've also got that stitching feel to it as well um so let's do another little let's do a little reindeer over here these are great I love these. Just takes a little bit of concentration. Good pair of glasses or a magnifying glass. If I could, I'm going to cheat on that one. It's a long bit. Shall have a look? Shall have a look at the little deer? Ready? Ta -da! They're brilliant. And they're just <laughs> sad, I know, I know. But the detail is mad. It really is. See, I don't have to do all of the little deer. I could just do some of the deer. Yes, dear. Yes, dear, no dear. And as we said before, there's no, there isn't it. There's certain, um, I say there's no rules. They're not really rules. They're just um, processes. I think processes are, is a nicer word um, for the different skill levels and different techniques. Um, so we can give you the hints and tips on what to do, how to do things. And I'm sure if like Linda was sitting here teaching you, um, if Barbara was here teaching you, we'd all say the same thing, but in a different way, because that's the way in which we're built. Um, no, it's just the way it is. We'll end up with the same result. So, oh, Ken, Ken, Ken. What's the weather outside? Looks like rain, dear. Rain, it definitely is, Ken. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Mr. Cracker, write, cracker Joke Writer. There we go, Ken. That's, we've said this before, haven't we? You'd make a good cracker joke writer. <laughs> Very quick with his puns. Very quick. But it's great. It really is. Okay, so all we're doing it now, I'm just going in and just doing little bits of the design so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Now for this area here, it's a larger um, dot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is really wiggle the number two tool into that area. Okay, these little dots I'm just pressing into. But these ones are getting a wiggle. Get a wiggle on, they say. I'm going as fast as I can. Well, that's a wriggle, isn't it? Not a wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do this little... I love these little snowflakes. See, it's not until you press into those dots and you see the design come to life. I want to finish this one off now, just so you can see. We can run over a little bit, can't we? Of course we can. It's raining outside. Nobody wants to go out. We could carry on for another hour or so, couldn't we? <laughs> I'm sure you'd get bored of my voice after an hour anyway. 
So, um, right. Okay. I'm going to stop and we're going to reveal the little bit here that we've done. Ready? Ta -da! Nice. I love that. Really, really do. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Okay. Goodness me. That hour. It just flies by. It really does. Um, so next week, we'll continue decorating our stocking. Um, and then just give you a recap of what's coming up. So Thursday, 10 o'clock in the chat with Barb live on Facebook and YouTube page. Then we need to head straight over to Creighton Craft for the Pergamano shows with Tina at 11 and three. Then Friday evening is the Christmas treasure set for Crafted On Live with Barb. And then back on Saturday at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m., Tina will be enticing you with some more of her beautiful plates um, on the TV. So, Thank you once again for joining me. I will see you again next Tuesday in Groove Tuesday if you want to come back and carry on with the stocking. Um, don't forget to share what you make on Groovy Worldwide, Clarity Worldwide. Um, don't forget to check out Barbara's blog, barbaragrayblog.com. Um, the Clarity Matters blog, which is claritymattersblog.com. Now this month, we've, we're looking at all things inky and stampy and dyes. Um, so we're introducing a few new people to the, the twist this month on the Clarity Matters blog. So we've had Jane, Sarah Brennan, I think we've got Sonia Goodliffe coming up, um, I think we've got Tina Morris coming up. So just for the month of November, we've gone all inky, stampy and sort of arty in that way. And then we'll get back to Groovy in December. So um, thank you all for your company again, once again. Thank you, Stuart, for your help in the room. Um, Enjoy the rest of the week. I think it's still raining. I can't hear it on the on the ceiling, on the on the roof. Um, if I could hear it on the ceiling, I'd be panicking. Um, so um, I will see you again next week. Take care now. Bye bye. <laughs>